they're at about the mid 80s, you start beginning to publish cross culturally. Mm-hmm. Look at the cross culturally, I think one of the early. Um, when you start the inclusion, you start to talk about them in the work. Mm-hmm. But it's not until really kind of in the 90s that you actually start to physically do the work other places, or mm-hmm. at least from the research that I had mm-hmm. done. How did you kind of start going off in that direction? Did that suddenly become important? Uh oh. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm not sure that there's an easy answer to that, but okay. part of it is the Canadian American thing. Mm-hmm. Um Being a Canadian moving to the United States and, and actually having spent a lot of time in the United States, I'd spent, before I moved, finally I had been on sabbatical at the University of Arizona a couple times mm-hmm. and so on. Um, but y- you realize even two countries next door to each other with so much overlap and s- in terms of language and culture, we see things so differently. and. Um, I just got more and more interested in in that because if we see things so differently, you know, and then oh, moving to Virginia, I mean, people in Virginia see things differently from the rest of the United States. I mean, you just mm-hmm. you really start to think how important culture is, and at the same time, the zeitgeist in in um, feminist psychology and women's studies was also starting to be more and more broad. Mm-hmm. You know that you know, we should be looking at more diversity, always, in, you know, increasing the scope of that diversity. Um, so that was part of it. Um, I did have a colleague at the University of Winnipeg, a sociologist who was from India, um, who was always advocating for the inclusion of cross-cultural perspectives. And for a long time, I kind of resisted that. I thought, you know, it's already complicated enough. You know, first of all, gender. And now we do um, multicultural uh, or diversity within cultures, mm-hmm. and now to try and expand that to multicultural—that's just too complicated. <laughs> I'm not doing it. <laughs> but um, uh, gradually, I realized that you can't really can't not do it. You have to do. You can't. You also can't do it. Too. I mean, that's the frustrating thing. You can't. You really can't understand people in another culture unless you're going to go and live there for a long time. Mm. Um, I, I don't think I understood Americans at all until I actually transplanted myself here. All the time I was here as a graduate student, all the time I was here on sabbatical, I was always a visitor and I thought of myself that way and I never really felt integrated into this culture and I really just kept thinking how strange these people are, <laughs> you know. And <laughs> now that I live here, and I have lived here since 1989, when I think of Canadians, I sometimes think, "What Canadians are strange?" <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, anyway, no, you've you've done. I I think that's great. You've done um, visiting scholarships on mm-hmm. some of that. You're saying immersing yourself in the society. Mm-hmm. How has that been different as far as? The study of gender, the study of women, how looking from feminist perspectives in these different cultures, when they, even their definitions of gender and fem, even the idea of feminist, what that is, or mm-hmm. seem to be so different. Do you find that? Yeah. How have you found that in it's, your work? It's, it's really hard to work with. I mean, I think it's, it's more something that you just kind of get a feel for, and, and it, I think it informs my work. Mm-hmm. But I, I'm not sure that I ever get a real handle on it. I think um, I spent some time at the University of Costa Rica, and um, feminists there tend to be very, or at least at that time, were more sort of Marxist-defined feminists. Okay. They were very interested in all economic justice issues, which um, not that that American feminists weren't interested in that, but the, it's very, the situation is just very different. And, um, yeah, it, it's, it, it was fascinating to be in that place, and the language barrier was difficult to deal with, you know, and I'm sure that there was a lot of subtleties that I missed, even though I 
I went to Spanish classes every single morning that <laughs> I was there, and I did learn a lot. But you know, to get to the point of academic discussions, it's it's pretty tricky. But um, yeah, I, I, and and just interpersonally, things were so different. I mean, I can remember going to one feminist conference at the University of Costa Rica, and they were they had made a big effort to bring in women, non-academics women, um, to come and speak at the conference, which is something we rarely do. Mm -hmm. And um, they were women who were having a really hard time. And they were poor, they were, um, their husbands basically told them what to do and they had to do it. And, um, and yet, what was so interesting to me as a psychologist is, these women, these poor, oppressed women, they got, you gave them a microphone and they got up and, man, you know, they were, they were not quiet. They were not submissive in their speech. Their speech was very assertive and wow. powerful. But, but while they were talking, what they were saying is, I can't do this, I can't do that. But they weren't tentative in the way they spoke. <coughs> so, um, it, it just, so many things are different that it's, it's hard to make generalizations, I guess. How has that